destroyed around the 9th of Av. The second temple was destroyed around the 9th of Av. And the 9th of Av this year is on July 26, 27. With that being said, our body is a temple now. The Holy Spirit is sealed within my temple, your temple. All right. And then we are also represented as a corporate temple of the body of Christ. Yep. Okay. So what's going to happen to this body at the rapture resurrection? It's going to be destroyed and rebuilt. Okay. It's going to happen in the blink of an eye. I mean, twinkling, boom, destroyed, rebuilt, bam. It's going to happen quick. All right. But that's something, something interesting to think about. You know, I think that's what that was his uh, premise, right? Rapture, resurrection, the ninth of all. Right, the temple is destroyed. The bodily temple of all of us believers, the body of Christ, our individual temples and the corporate temple, okay, is destroyed and rebirth. We all have the same birthday on the rapture resurrection. All right. All of us have the same birthday, individually rebirth and a corporate rebirth, the body of Christ, which is only one body. Okay. And so we have a big corporate birthday, so we'll all have the same birthday on the ninth of all. So if it works out that way. You know, when our temple is taken down and rebuilt instantly. I think Brother Bob has uh, shared something here that I felt was meaningful. And I wanted to kind of play off on what he is sharing here because um, as he has shared here that the ninth of Av is what the Jews call Tisha B'Av, which Tisha means nine. And and the temple was destroyed, but... Um, and right now, the body of our bodies are the temple. The Jews lost their temple on the ninth of Av. They lost the first temple. They lost the second temple on the ninth of Av, as they consider it. And uh, even as we're looking at that right now, the the church is the is the corporate body of Christ. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I want to look at this. Uh, not so much as just saying the temple to be destroyed, but the temple was taken away from the Jewish people as a wake up call to them that their sin was serious, that their refusal to walk with God was serious, that their refusal to walk, embrace the promise was serious because the first Tisha B'Av, it actually started not with the temple being destroyed. And as uh, Brother Bob brought out this year, it is July 26 and 27, 2023. And we know 726 is meaningful because it is in Strong's Concordance in alphabetical order. The 726th word in Greek in alphabetical order as organized by Strong's. The 726th word is Harpazo, which is rapture. So we're having a rapture watch for the 9th of Av. Why is that? Well, we just want to say we're not making a prediction. Only God knows for sure we're not setting a date. We're watching dates and consideration of the times we're in because the day is approaching and it might be today. It might be tomorrow. But what happened on the 9th of Av originally, as this picture depicts, here is uh, two people carrying uh, carrying this uh bundle of grapes here and uh, we know this represents going into the promised land they do the in numbers chapter 13 and 14 moses sent the 12 spies one from each tribe joshua and caleb you know they came back with a good report but and they brought back they said the fruit in this land is good and they brought back this uh this fruit of grapes and and uh the fruit was good uh, but but there were giants in the land and the 10 spies turned them away from going into the promised land. And Jesus came in John chapter 10. He says, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus came to give all who would believe in him to the Jew first and also to the Gentile abundant life. And the Jews who rejected Jesus, as John 1, 10 says, he came to his own and his own received him not. Uh, they rejected the promised life that Jesus came. They rejected the spiritual promised land. And um, this is a, according to Chabad.org. Uh, the spies returned from the promised land with frightening reports. That was on the 9th of Av, which this year is 726. It's July 26th. And so they... St the ninth of Av starts off 
with the Jews, the slaves there refusing to go into the promised land, refusing to trust the promise of God, refusing to embrace the life and the abundance that God had made because they were focused on the obstacles and the giants in the land. So, uh, and God decreed that they would wander in the desert for 40 years. So that was the beginning. So when the first temple was destroyed, after that, that was many hundreds of years later, 900 years later, and the first temple was destroyed. On that day, it was uh, God's wake-up call to the Jewish people that, uh, hey, I'm remembering that you didn't go in to the promised land, and I'm remembering now you're not walking with me. You're not, you're not uh, applying the truth of my word to your life. And, and uh, then the second temple was destroyed there on the 9th of Av. According to their tradition, the first temple was destroyed. So what I want to share with you about that is not just to focus on the issue of the temple was destroyed, but to focus on the issue that the temple was a blessing to the Jewish people and it was taken away from them. And as we're thinking about the rapture, today the church, that is the true Christians, the evangelical Christians, the Christians who have truly been born again are the best friends that the Jewish people have in the world today. And there is a growing sentiment of hatred and animosity toward the Jewish people around the world. But it is the Christians who believe the Bible, who take the Bible seriously, that are the mediators. They are the empathizers with the Jewish people because they believe that the Word of God and, and the Bible and the Old Testament makes it clear that uh, God has a purpose for the Jewish people in the end times, and He's not going to forget the covenant that He has made with them, and we embrace that. And there is a difference between what God is going to do with the Jewish people in the end times and what He's going to do with the church. And uh, we know Jesus said, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And dear friends, the trumpets is going to blow. Jesus Christ is coming in the clouds to snatch those ready out of this world. And when he does, if it happened on the ninth of Av, the temple that is a great, the true temple of the Holy Spirit, that is the church of Jesus Christ, would be taken away from the Jewish people. And right now the church of Jesus Christ that truly believes the Bible are blessings to the Jewish people. They are the ones seeking to uh, understand their perspective. And uh, the Jewish people, especially Israel today, they have many enemies surrounding them with many thousands of missiles pointed at them. And um, when the, if, the church was taken away from them on the ninth of Av. It would be a great loss to them. And it would be a wake-up call. I believe the rapture is going to be on a day that God chooses to be a wake-up call to the Jewish people. That's the most important thing. It's not a matter of which calendar we're going by, but it's a, to me. But it's a matter of what day is going to be a wake-up call to the Jewish people. Because the tribulation period is going to be... A special time when God's spirit works with the Jewish people in the 70th week of Daniel. So just as the first temple was taken from the Jewish people on the 9th of Av, and they lost that blessing they had of having a temple, symbolizing the presence of God with them, and then they lost the second temple, they lost it as a, a sign that, God, that, the, that the blessing of God was... Uh, was was taken from them for that time period. And when the church of Jesus Christ is taken out of this world, the, the Jewish people will lose the temple that has been a blessing to them. And uh, that is just a consideration. So not so much as to look at it as the temple is going to be destroyed, but our bodies, we will, uh, we will be raptured. And uh, so Jesus Christ is coming soon. And, uh, you know, as this ninth of Bob, many other tragedies happen. Now, we do know that, uh, um, you know, Amos 8.10 says, I will turn your 
feast days in the morning. So this is not this is a day of mourning already. So, uh, but uh, that's a, that's a reason I do consider as well August second because that's a that is a feast day, a celebration day of weddings. And uh, Jesus did say as well, you know, there would be weddings. So we know around the world there'll be weddings, but the Jews won't be having weddings on the ninth of Av. But this is a consideration as we are uh, watching for the great and glorious time when Jesus Christ will appear. And I'm going to share, I will share with you uh, this uh, Jonathan Kahn sharing here about the ninth of Av, just as we're uh, look, considering this day. Sent into exile, thus the book of Lamentations. When did Nebuchadnezzar, the Babylonians, destroy the temple of Jerusalem? The ninth of Av. This is the beginning. This is the event from which all the other events come. The first destruction, the first temple, and then the second temple on the exact same day. And two different armies, centuries apart. I mean, you got the Romans on one hand, and you have the Babylonians on the other, 600 years or so apart, and yet on the exact same day. Nobody planned it. Nobody planned it at all. But in each case, you have, you have the destruction. The people are now taken into captivity. They lose their homes. They lose their possessions. And they go into exile. And so, and, and so you have all this, the beginning, and this is the thing that keeps repeating and repeating on the same day. The exile to Babylon. You know, you have all these things that are then repeated in some form. I mean, but it all goes back when they were, when the Jews are expelled from Spain and, and England and France. And all, it's all a replay of their expulsion from their own home. It's like they're leaving because God, they only have really one home. And God is saying, you're still not home. And it's ne no matter when they try, to make, they try to make home, it's never right yet. But you've got this template, the ninth of Ab mystery. It's a mystery that begins in ancient times, stretches all the way to modern history. And I could have actually gone further than World War II. But it's affected everything from Judaism to Christianity, even Islam, the diaspora, world history, modern Middle East, everything. I will put a link to this video in the description box. And I will share this uh, video with you as well. I believe this is a, talk, a video of... A, Jewish man here talking about the ninth of Av as a day of mourning. Every major ancient holiday on the Jewish calendar, even Yom Kippur, is ultimately about joy, except for one, Tisha B'Av. On this day, the ninth of the Hebrew month of Av, it's said that a series of major tragedies to the Jewish people occurred, including the destruction of the first and second temples. It's a day of mourning for getting kicked out of the land of Israel, for the destruction of Jerusalem, and the medieval expulsions from various lands. It's said that Tisha B'Av is the day when it all went down, literally. Sacred sites, entire communities, utterly destroyed, leaving a gaping hole in our collective soul. When life comes crashing down, we're left devastated. We cry, we mourn, we feel isolated. All natural responses to loss. Tisha B'Av is a day of mourning when the Jewish people acknowledge that no, Life is not all butterflies and roses. And yes, this tribe has been through some serious suffering. The time prior to this day is known as the three weeks. The period starts with a fast on the 17th of Tammuz when the siege of Jerusalem in 70 CE began. It intensifies during the last nine days when the walls were breached until the 9th of Av when the ancient temple fell. The whole period is somber and it's customary not to hold weddings during this time. Traditional Jews stop shaving, cutting their hair, and listening to music. During the nine days, some also refrain from eating meat and drinking alcohol. The final day is Tisha B'Av, a 24-hour fast. In the evening, it's common to sit on low stools or the floor at synagogue and to hear the Book of Echa, Lamentations, chanted by candlelight. The book, traditionally ascribed to Jeremiah, brings readers on a graphic journey of the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. Silent sit on the ground the elders of fair Zion. They have strung dust on their heads and girded themselves with sackcloth. The maidens of Jerusalem have bowed their heads to the ground. My eyes are spent with tears, my heart is in tumult. My being melts away over the ruin of my poor people, as babes and sucklings languish in the squares of the city. 
The melodies of the day are like a dirge, a time of reflection as Lamentations concludes, Ashivenu Adonai, turn us to you, Holy One, and we will return. Renew us as before. Following the reading, it's customary not to greet each other and to leave in silence, honoring the lives lost in the sacred space of introspection. When a dark history seems to follow an entire people around, it's only natural to ask the why, or how could this be? Sometimes these questions are real, and sometimes they're more like a lament. Why me? Why us? How could this have happened? Echa translates literally to how, as in, how could this be? Jewish thinkers have struggled to understand these questions for thousands of years. Historians see these as historical events, where one nation overpowered another. But the rabbis understood them differently. In Hebrew, sinat chinam, baseless or useless hatred, was rampant throughout the land. The rabbinic tradition understood the loss of Jerusalem and the temple to be the divine consequence of the people's unethical behavior. That's why this day is also a time to consider improving our own words and actions in the world especially how we treat others. Tisha B'Av comes in the midst of summer and yanks people out of that summertime and the living is easy feeling. The day invites Jews to turn inward and consider what it means to face national, spiritual, and individual darkness and loneliness. So as we're considering this, dear friend, Jesus Christ loves you very much, and I'll share this song with you as we have this rapture watch. We believe this, Jesus is coming soon. And it very well could be this month, or next month, or September, or October. But it's coming soon. The day is drawing near. Everything is coming together. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise.